Classic Bledsoe sets a start. Yo! Yo! What's up? What's up? We had to bring the energy today. We have um, a surprise, exciting guest, our producer, Alex. Everybody Alex. give him a hand. Woo! And I'm playing Alex today. Hey, everybody. Hey, Alex. <laughs> hey, hey, Alex. Hey. Yeah. And we got the headphones on because I am... Uh, I'm not giving up control this easy. <laughs> yeah, you, you oh have to gosh. let it go, man. I'm, that's that's what this is. It's you're a not, practice of letting go. You're not producing today. <laughs> I know. It's, it feels so strange. I mean, it feels pretty strange for me, too, to be honest, but we're we going to get through it. Do I, I want to be in the chair. Well, too, too bad. <laughs> it's not about you. It's about me. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so um, oh, man. yeah we we had just been talking about it for a while and we were like you know how cool would it be to like have Alex on the couch and sort of have like a uh, uh, an open conversation and, and get some of Alex's perspectives on things so I, I don't have any clue where we're going to go today I just figured you you know have a lot to get off your chest and we go hmm. into whatever you want to go into well cool. i have a i have a, a question if we want to start off with a question yeah let's do it it's a little bit of a hardball question so just go ahead and prepare yourself emotionally um my question is how did you get so hot Ooh. <laughs> uh, 25 years of uh i don't know aging like wine <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. My mom's pretty good looking. My dad's pretty good looking. It's just I kinda, feel that. It works like that. <laughs> I feel that. But no, Nick, because you did that, I want you to think of a hard question, like a real hard question, mm. and I want it before the end of the episode. I can I can definitely do that for sure. I, okay. I've, I had a couple pop into my head immediately when All you right. said that. Cool. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Would you believe me if I told you this was the third time I was a guest on a podcast? Wait, what? explain uh oh i i know what you're gonna yeah, say yeah yeah uh alex hunt shout out alex shout hunt out alex he hunt. does uh fishing uh videos and podcasts he invited me on his show twice he's a ex-coworker of ours yeah no way yep he has a fishing podcast uh his podcast i think he tries to highlight people in the community it's What's pretty it called? interesting the hunt for greatness or something like hunt that? for greatness podcast yeah he tries to um it's like a local yeah thing and then he does, he fishes a lot. So he does the fishing. I stuff. didn't realize you were like a guest on there though. Like yeah, I, I know about the podcast. Like he's a cool guy. I, yeah, did, yeah. I, I didn't realize you were on there. The first time I went on and kind of talked to a lot of conspiracy stuff. That's why he brought me on. Talked uh -huh. about conspiracy, talked about, um, substances and, and my relationship with them and why I was open about them at the time. Um, my thoughts have changed a lot. That was probably five years ago. So, uh, okay. We yeah. were just meeting five years ago. Yeah, this it was probably right around the time I met you or right before we, I met we you. We met in 2018, I know. Yeah. So that's that, when I started working with you. Yeah, and that lends itself to that story pretty well, which if you've been hanging out and you're an Omi and you've been hanging out with us for a long time, you probably know that story, but I but figured we could go- this is the time to go into it, yeah. Super deep into it. So uh, I worked at a furniture store here in town and we were hiring for salespeople. And my job at the time was- I, I was kind of all over the place. I was uh, doing a lot of IT, some management stuff, a lot of customer service stuff. Uh, but basically, my my main role when we would have new people come come in get hired was uh, basically setting up the iPad and and kind of getting the equipment ready for for people coming you, in. You realize you were basically like the shadow government for that company, oh, yeah. <laughs> like Alex. <laughs> seriously, dude. <laughs> Alex did like all the behind the scenes like stuff for yeah. the company. There was there wasn't like one role. There wasn't one. It job was very. <laughs> it was very. It was a very lean company. And what I mean is like there was not a lot of. It, we did a lot. We did a lot of business. We did a lot of things with a very very small staff. Like uh, everybody yeah. it was a did family multiple owned roles. business. Yeah. So, yeah, you you would like you you gained all the intel, <laughs> <laughs> and I learned all the intel because we were cool. I knew all the like behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, and, you know some of it. Kept some of it right for sure. For sure. I mean, I know, know my I, place. I got to be true. To I know my <laughs> you place. Know your place. I know my place. Yeah, <laughs> but like you know, a lot of the stuff I kept close to the chest, and yeah, I've been thinking a lot about that man lately. Just with because I don't work there anymore, and, and my job now is is vastly different, and I just like it I, i've just been reminiscing in that whole role mm -hmm. and, and it was the, fun that we had fun, fun part of that yeah we, had we just had time. fun every day just hanging out like 
you know, because because I was in sales, Alex was not. Alex was more like a salary, you know, like he he had tasks to do for the company, and I'd be maybe there'd be some days where I would talk to two or three clients on a slow day, and then the rest of the day, me and Alex were just chilling. Dude, one time, uh, one time we left. And I, we would just like go shopping at the sports store down the store. <laughs> we would go have like two, three hour lunch breaks sometimes, just hang out, get a beer. <laughs> that was, that was you know a what terrible I mean? influence, man. Oh, dude. <laughs> you can't talk about it's the sales, drinking. bro. Yeah, yeah. It's sales. <laughs> no, that was a great time. Yeah. So we, and we spent a lot of time talking about this after, after we met and, and that, that story is um, you actually had come prepared. I remember this, and, and it's so fitting now. Like for the job you mean? Uh-huh, and you showed up with your own iPad. I'm a hard worker, bro. Yeah, first day, you, you showed up with your own iPad. And that's just so so strange because anyway, you see all types of people in, in retail yeah. sales. And, um, so you said you handed me the iPad and said, yo, man, will you put me on the, uh, on the Wi-Fi? And that was like a close guarded secret because we, I didn't give that stuff out because people would just be sitting around watching YouTube videos and stuff like that. So I go and I, I put you on the Wi-Fi and I put you on the Wi-Fi and the first thing that happens was you get a Reddit notification. Oh yeah. While on I'm holding your iPad. iPad. Yeah, it popped And up. so I handed it back to him and I'm like, you know, I, I just try to be friends with everybody uh, that I work with. And I, I handed it back and I said, yo man, you on Reddit? And you said, Yeah. And I was like, well, what kind of subreddits are you into? And you're like, this is, I kid you not. You're you like, said, do you like our trees? No, no, no. I said, I said, <laughs> what, are, what are you into? And you're like, oh no, the basic ones. Like that's the answer you gave me. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's cool. I like uh, trees and conspiracy and <laughs> <laughs> like full open up. Right. I'm like, this is what I'm into. And he's like, oh yeah, cool, cool. And then we kind of just went our, went our separate ways for the day. I had to do video training for hours. Yeah. And then it was a day or two later when it was time for me to issue you your, your equipment. And I remember we went through all of that. You picked it up like quick because you obviously, I just, yeah. right. Um, and you said, yo man, I, I forget how it started, but we ended up talking about Aleister Crowley's face on the Beatles Sergeant album Pepper. cover. The album. Yeah. Yes. That was the first thing because you had, you had remembered that I had talked about conspiracy. And so you open up this door with the conspiracy thing. And we started talking about that because that blew my mind. And then we started talking about Aleister Crowley and Led Zeppelin. I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Aleister Crowley. Just fact check you there <laughs> Hey, quick. give him a break. This is his <laughs> Oh, episode. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's I'm about sorry. me, Nick. You're it's right. You're right. Me. You're right. It's about you. So, uh, yeah. And at the time, super into conspiracies. And one thing led to another and you probably remember this more than I do, but you started telling me about your family and your, and your, um, and the experiences after feeling me out. Yeah. Know, like, I felt you out for like two, three days. And I was like, okay, this guy's really cool, really open-minded. Like, let's see how he reacts. And I just like started showing him stuff about my dad. And I just remember your eyes. And, and at the time you were only like, you could have been older than 18 or 19. Uh, you, were, you were pretty young. I was 18, 19, 20, somewhere. I, I, just, I, I could do the math. And but. I was like, you know, t we're five years apart. So I was, you know, 24, 25. I think I was 24. So I was a little bit older. And I just remember like, this is a, a, a smart, older teenager, fresh out of school. But like, he, he, he's really intelligent. And I was like, let me see how he reacts. And I'm telling you this stuff. And I just remember your eyes were like saucers. Like you were so into it. Yeah. No, I, I remember, I remember being like, not really like mind blown, but more like I've got to know more. Yeah. Um, that's so cool. And never, never like doubt, not doubt in like you're full of shit, but like doubt in like, I need to find out more. Well, I started showing you the pictures of like all, you know, the yeah. CIA parties I'd been to all this right. crazy, fantastic stuff. Well, that was later stuff. on. So we end right. up at your apartment. And within days, within just started days. working together. I'm like, come over to my house. Let's hang out. Yeah. So I got off work Who at seven. I, I got off work at seven, immediately went to your house. And that first night I remember, man, we s talked on the couch like this, exactly like this until two, three in the morning. And I'm like, dude, I have to leave. Like, I got to go back to work tomorrow. Yeah. Like, I don't want to, we're having such a great time, but like, I, this has gone on long enough. And we've <laughs> <laughs> it's gone on long enough. <laughs> yeah. 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 We did that a couple more times in the next, in the next two, three weeks. And, um, it was shortly after meeting you and, and having those conversations where I was like, man, you need to have a podcast for real. We had barely known each other. Like we, it was weeks. Yeah. And what I didn't know is I didn't know Nick and 
I didn't know that Nick had been telling him something very similar. You need to start a podcast. So I have no, no clue who Nick was just talking to Ryan, just talking about the conspiracies and, and the, and the experiences and stuff and, and pushing him to do a podcast. Fast forward years, it, it took you years to kind of take that leap and, and for, for good reason. And, um, now we're here, but, um, what's so interesting is I've always, for as long as I can remember, been into that conspiracy side of things. Yeah. And just alternative thinking, questioning what we're supposed to believe is true. Right. Yeah. And in my opinion, every person has the initiator, like the initiator in their life. Like you don't wake up one day and like, I'm going to study conspiracy theories. Yeah. It's something, it's either a piece of media or someone in your life that, that kind of turns that on to, or turns you on to that, that thing. And for, there was somebody for me and, and I'll keep this person anonymous and they know exactly who they are. But I was young, man. This was prior to 2012 because the first thing that we started talking about was the Mayan calendar and the world ending in 2012. And I, this had to have been 2010, 2011, which would have made me... 13. 12, 13 years old. Yeah, or 12. Yeah, so I'm freaking out thinking the world's going to end. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> we all were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then it started to evolve. I was ready, baby. I was playing things. Smite that night. Yo, <laughs> real quick, I vividly remember... Uh, the day that Ryan told me about that and you, we were in school, we were in school that day when you told me about like the Mayan calendar and all the, you know, 2012 stuff. And I'll never forget you texted, we were texting when you were telling me about it. And I left the class I was in like in complete existential dread. <laughs> Dude, uh. I, I kid you not, I had like a movie scene where I was looking at all the kids and, and everybody in the hallways between classes, and I swear I had that moment where I was like, these poor fools. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, they don't even know. It's like that meme when you're it's over. in the corner at the party, like they, they don't know the world's gonna end in 2012. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Look at yeah. them enjoying themselves. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fools. <laughs> so, I kind of, I started saying all that to, I guess, bring us to the point where we met. And I remember being a young kid and lying in bed, basically praying because I grew up Catholic. I don't think that's, a, if you've been following along, you know that. Um, went to Catholic school, so ended up in mass twice a week. You naughty little altar boy. <laughs> I was never an altar boy. Oh. You, you had... You had to train to do that. Oh, you had okay. to go, you had to like spend time out of school to learn how to do that. And I just never, my mom wanted me to, I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. So, but I did speak at, um, our mass, our, yeah, our uh, school mass. I've mm -hmm. spoken a couple of times having to go up there and open the gospel and re I was so nervous. I mean, naturally I'm a child. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I remember laying in bed as a child and wanting God to just, show me the truth. Like as I'm getting into these conspiracies and they're eating me alive by night and I would have to go do my normal day-to-day -day stuff. I remember laying there and being like, I just want to know the truth. Yeah. There was a point in my time where a point in my time, a point in my life where I thought the highest honor was to get, um, assassinated by the government. I remember. Yeah. We were friends at that time. Yeah. Super into the conspiracies, man. Yeah, like if you're banned, you're doing something right. And like, yeah. I, I, get, I get the logic, you know, I get it. So when we started doing this behind the scenes, I'm like, all right, what's our plan if we get kicked off of YouTube? And it's still, like, I still think about, I don't think it's going to happen for, for a while, at least. For a while. <laughs> it's, it's always in the back of my head, I, man. I, I honestly don't <laughs> I definitely think we're shadow banned. Yeah. In some way. I mean, yeah. dude, but sorry to cut you off, but like yeah. my dad shows me all the time. I mean, every time I go home, he shows me this, like he, for, for, for a very long time, he was stuck at 10,000 followers. Mm -hmm. And in a week he would gain like a hundred followers. Sometimes a day he'll gain 30, 40, 50 followers and lose. And then he'll lose just as many. And he, he was constantly like 10,000, 10,100, 10,000, 10,100. He was, he was stuck at 10,000. What felt like, yeah. or, or 9,000. He couldn't quite get to 10,000. And it's like, come on, man. Like there's something's weird yeah. going on. And no, I still believe that stuff, yeah. but shadow banning is a real thing. Yeah. 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 No, for, for certain. Um, so getting eaten alive by these conspiracy theories uh, because they started to lead into, I started getting more interested in political stuff and not, 
you know, moon landing aliens, that kind of thing. And so it was like the government's evil kind of. Yes. Yeah. I, I feel you. And I still, like, I still have some of these feelings, but I I'm getting somewhere. I promise. I remember I'm just riding vividly. the wave, baby. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a surfer. <laughs> <laughs> so having known your story and knowing you so personally and then dealing with all of this conspiracy political stuff and falling into, you know, really starting to fall into one particular theory about some bachelor who lives on an island and does what he pleases, I I'm not going to... You know, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. The guy that was arrested very publicly. It yeah. gets Maybe very we dark. Say the name for banning purposes. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Does it, gets it very, rhyme with Schmeffery Schmepstein? Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it gets very dark. And I'm like, I believe that. The height of all that news was when we were just really becoming friends. Yeah. So it was a very present, you know, it was just all going on. Yeah. Thank you for like clearing the timeline up a little bit. I know I'm jumping all over the place. No, that's but, good. I got you. Um, I, I believe that, right? And I believe in that darkness. And I remember having the revelation to myself that if the dark exists, and I believe so heavily that the dark does exist, the opposite of that has to be true because right. that's a seven, one of the seven hermetic principles. Yeah. Like the light has to be just as real and just as prevalent. It's like, it's not just one side that exists. Mm -hmm. And that was the be. That was the beginning of the end of my real heavy like political doom, conspiracy thinking doom and gloom, and the process for me to leave all of that behind and really start focusing on the things that we focus on on the show, which leads, you know, everything into the show and how the show has helped me and just like, like, and I'm not saying you shouldn't have your own thoughts and stand up for what you think is right. I just think that you have to really protect your yourself, your your mindset, your inner self, and your energy, in order to like actually start progressing down this spiritual, mm -hmm. you know. You, sage you can't focus path. on the negative stuff all the time, right? You can't. Yeah, it's it's not good. You're not going to go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. So we're now we're here, and uh, I don't know what else you want to talk about. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> that that was really cool. You know, like it 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 was particularly awesome because you know as I've talked about many times on the show and like especially now in full disclosure where I'm just going on you know all these solo rants uh, giving a little bit more insight into like my background and how I've come to reach certain conclusions. One thing that I'm pretty open about is like I'm very guarded about you know who I reveal this information to. You know, talking on camera to the internet to thousands of strangers that I don't know is, is, is a lot more comfortable. And that's uncomfortable sometimes, believe me, but it's a lot more comfortable than like face to face to people I've known for, let's say, coming on 30 years now and have never had these weird conversations with them. And it's like this alter life. You know, I have so many cousins and relatives and aunts and uncles that I've never had a single conversation about any of this stuff with. Yeah. And I, I just have this sense about people after knowing them. In your case, it was within a matter of like two or three days. But I have this <laughs> sense about people now that I've developed through so much heartbreak of being a kid and not thinking people would not believe it just because they know us and just like, oh, you know, we're close. They, they're going to believe us. You know, and you tell people about this this crazy UFO stuff and, and then they're shocked. Like, get away. I don't want to ever talk to you again. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't know. It's like when I met you and it was like a sign for me that you were into conspiracies because that told me, okay, he thinks alternatively. He doesn't, he doesn't just accept what is presented to him on a day-to-day -day basis. And I, I just will never forget, like when I told you about this stuff and seeing your face, it's burned into my mind. Your eyes were wide. Like, like I, I can't describe it. I could tell right then and there that you, you, you knew that it was real. And I feel like it's crazy when you zoom out and think about it, but our friendship progressed very quickly. Cause we, obviously yeah. it was meant to be, you know, for right. us to all do this together. But like how, how, how often do you get a job where you're in sales and it's like basically a joke and seven hours. I mean, it was a hard job. Like, don't get me wrong. You know this, like yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. sales part was hard, Yeah, but you, you know, it was like 10 hour shifts, something like that with, you know, an hour lunch break. Right. It, it, it's, when you're working, you're working. Yeah. But, and when you're not, you're not. But that was like maybe two, three hours a day of talking right. to customers. The rest of the time is sitting around. It's very similar to restaurant too. Exactly. Like yeah. when you're on, you're on. So we had, we worked together for 14 months and it was day in and day out. We were literally just hanging out. 
watching videos, walking around, doing whatever we wanted, hanging outside out the back, just talking. <laughs> and it like, it progressed very quickly. I got a funny story about okay. work. We'll go back to work. So Nick, you'll love this. So oh, yeah. I all like the whole time I worked there, I always had a skateboard in my car. Yeah. Always. And when it would get so slow, I would like ride my skateboard. I've ridden my skateboard through the store. Well, uh, I'm not going to go into another story about it, but uh, <laughs> we had a delivery truck dropping off and this is like a huge box truck. And I know like all the guys, right? All the guys from the warehouse that came to bring some inventory. Then they needed to bring a piece of furniture to the front of the store. So it was easier for them to drive the truck around the store than it was to haul this heavy piece of furniture to the front of the store from the back. So like, we're going to pull around. I'm like, cool, grab my skateboard, grab onto the back of the truck. And I rode my skateboard holding onto the truck all the way around this shopping center up to the front. I'm like, oh, whatever, just having fun. Well, there was a grocery store next door. And the gro- whoever the manager of the grocery store was saw that. <laughs> you talking about the MJ oh. location? Yes. MJ, okay. Yes. And the manager of the grocery store called the furniture store and said, hey, you got some kid riding his skateboard on the back of your delivery truck out here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's the most Remember, Alex I, thing I've ever heard in my entire life. He started working there at like 17 too. Yeah. Damn. And uh, Until last year, basically. Or until the year I was, yeah. Uh, yeah, 23 or four. Yeah. So I go inside and um, Danette answered the phone and she goes, were you riding your skateboard? And I was like, nah. <laughs> And he's like, well, the manager just called from this uh, grocery store and said you were. Like, no, it said somebody was, but like, <laughs> they all knew it was me. You know? <laughs> so she never told on me, man. We have some horror stories from that job. That Plausible maybe, deniability. I, I don't know. There's there's some stories that like, just, just the amount of fun we had and like just the goofing and I, I don't know, I, you know, from what I was saying earlier, I just wanted to say like, it's very, we're very blessed that we had that yeah. environment to where basically eight hours a day we were hanging out as friends we and then, Oh, Alex, I got a customer. Day. I got to go work for 20 minutes. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, was, it was insane. Well, don't act like I never did anything either. <laughs> no, you did. Yeah, you were in the back room in the office. And when my customers left, I was <laughs> zip right to <laughs> the office. <laughs> what was that? It was an automatopoeia. It was an action noise. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm zipping away, dude. I was right back there to his office and I would be sitting in his office and we're just hanging out for hours. And it was crazy, but like, I'm, I'm thankful for that because our yeah. friendship progressed very, very quickly. And I feel like it was meant to be, I feel like, you know, just the same with you. Like we, we were all brought together through mm-hmm. various yeah. crazy encounters that, you know, if, if one other thing happened, we could have never met, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and like you, 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 um, you, took to the information very well. And like, I feel like that was another reason our friendship progressed so quickly because I didn't let anybody else there on the secret until after I quit. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't talk about it with anyone. As far as I knew, I was just your typical furniture salesman. And me and Alex would be sneaking off having these like deep chats yeah, <laughs> all day. Yep. I have and a, it, I have a quick question for, uh, Alex. Uh, uh-oh. so was that, well, first of all, I feel like we kind of glazed over the fact that you were low key, his boss, like, like he, he wasn't my boss, but he was in a position above me to, to dish out tasks and things like that. Like, so yeah, I wasn't, Ryan was not directly reporting to me, but the person that Ryan reported to was on the same level as me. Right. Like different, Dif- different, different department, department. Yeah. but like he was in a position to where like, you know what he, he, he had, if I asked Ryan to do something, he would probably do it. With like at, at, in that time, he would, and I didn't it. complain about stuff. He would, I, he I don't would think I ever asked you to do anything. No, I, I, I was a, I was a really earnest worker. I mean, uh, come on, man. <laughs> in, in my time there, I sold the most Tempur Pedics. Hey. In my time there, people passed me later. Yeah, but like I, I, I'm a hard worker, and like if it's something that I see opportunity in, I, I go at it. Over time, I started to kind of realize, like, okay, I don't need to be sitting around doing trainings on my iPad all the time, and there's not customers here. But yeah, but I, my, I took uh, it very seriously. My question for you, Alex, was. Was that the, was Ryan the first person that you spoke to that was an experiencer? To the caliber, yes. Um, my, one of my good friends, shout out Dylan, 
uh, him and his father had a sighting when they were out hunting and he was very young wow. and he just told we, it was like a campfire story and we never really talked about it. Same orb, orange, like low above the tree line in wooded North Carolina. Whoa. That's crazy, man. I think that's a lot more common than people realize. Yeah. You know, the day after the documentary aired in 2008, I've told the story a dozen times on the podcast, but just, you know, for sake of conversation, I'm talking 2008, the next day I go to class and my art teacher holds me after class and she's like, can you stay behind just a minute? All the kids leave. It's just me and her in the room. And she pulls out a newspaper clipping. It was like an article she found on the FayettevilleObserver.com and printed it out. Like it wasn't the newspaper. It was an online news clipping and it was of the documentary airing. And she showed me this and she goes, this is your dad, right? And I was like, yeah. And she goes, I watched this and um, I, I just think it was so brave of y'all to come forward and tell this story. And I believe you. And many, many years ago when I was a little girl, I was with my aunt. And, um, we saw something, it was like what you described and we never talked about it again in North Carolina. You know, mm -hmm. I think it's very common Yeah, and people Damn. just don't talk about it. Damn. So follow up question, Alex, when, uh, so you had the conversation with Ryan, you guys had, I mean, a, a bunch of conversations. A bunch like, of them. Yeah. 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 And at, you said that like at first you were like, you know, I don't, I don't really know, but I'm trying to piece it together. Do you remember the moment when it like clicked for you? Like, Oh, I think this is real. It was shortly after it, 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 it was just me with my guard up being that conspiracy guy. I'm like, and, and knowing him for a couple weeks, it's like, yeah, like I'm not dismissing what he's saying. It's just like, I'm not all in yet. Oh, I was, I was the same way. Yeah. And then I think it was, I think you started showing me pictures like when I came to your house and it was like seeing the pictures and then sitting with you and listening to the way that you talk. I mean, it's, it is, it's really for me, the, the passion and conviction that you speak with that really, there's no doubt in my mind, you and your father, mm -hmm. but like, you know, I, I met you before I met him. Right. Well, that's yeah. what else I wanted to talk about. Oh, what meeting dad for the first time? Yeah. Well, follow up question for you, Nick. Oh yeah. Are you having fun? I am having a blast, actually. Yeah, this is cool. This yeah, is this cool is really shit. weird. Like, I didn't think it would feel that weird, but it's pretty awesome. <laughs> it does feel... I mean, I'm happy, but yeah. it, I love my job. This feels weird. <laughs> like, I, I, don't I, know. I just enjoy pretending that I'm you. Uh, for, <laughs> yeah, for me, it's the power. It, yeah, oh, we, we know. <laughs> and, the, and responsibility. <laughs> yeah. We know. Like, so, you guys have a hard job, though. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, not, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a lot this of pressure. is like, I, I'm not excited to edit this because I don't like listen. I don't, <laughs> don't like, need to edit this. No, no, no. I'm, I mean like. Unless you, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I say some shit. Um, no, no, I mean like I have to edit it. Like it has to go out. Right. You know, I don't want to listen to myself talk. Oh. Uh, no, nah, you're gravy, baby. <laughs> I'm hoping my friends that don't really talk to me about the podcast listen to this, but. They will. We'll, we'll yeah. force them to. Yeah. I'll strap them to a chair and put the headphones <laughs> on or something. Oh. I would love to hear about when you first met Chris. It was, so let me cut in real quick. Okay, so okay. I worked with him for 14 months. So I started there August of 2018. I know that it was the week of my birthday and I left in, um, October of 2019. Remember it was the day after I proposed to my wife. Remember it was the day after I, I proposed. That's, that's crazy. No, I don't yeah. remember. And, um, and it's because I got offered another gig that was yeah. offering a lot more money. And I was like, I remember, I remember. Because you got, sh you got like headhunted. You had a client come in, work with you buying furniture and oh, then wow. offered you a job. Pretty much. Yeah. Like and on the spot. I was like, it took me weeks. To I was happy it. for you, but I was really bummed that, that that whole thing was coming to an end. Oh. Yeah, for sure. But yeah. I mean, our friendship never, it never right. obviously. dwindled. I mean, <laughs> yeah, obviously we're here. Dude, the next year we started the podcast. It was a blessing. So, like, it was, it was you a know, blessing. We started the podcast or we started planning the podcast in 2020. I left the company at the end of 2019. The day after I proposed, I had already been being scouted by this other guy in a different industry. Uh, for two weeks, I was considering it. I proposed to my wife and I was like, let's go. Major life change. Let's plunge. Giddy up, baby. And I was very, you know, upfront with Alex about it. We stayed friends the whole time. Obviously, we're still here. But anyway, so my point is, um, I was going somewhere with that. We, um, meeting your dad, the timing. Yeah. So shortly after I left the company, um, and we, we progressed our friendship outside of work, but like hanging out, 
you know, and I was like, you know what, Let, let's, let's take a trip to Fayetteville. I want you to meet dad. And I think, you know, it'll be really cool. And maybe we'll have some sightings real quick. This was after how long of knowing each other? Oh, this two, was a year or two. This, so this was after you left? Left. Okay. Yes, gotcha. Yes. And, um, it was like, we'd only known each other about two years at this point. Mm-hmm. And I don't think you had a signing that night. I didn't. But when you left, we had sightings. No. There's something else. Okay. You'll remember. I'll start telling the story. So you're like, hey, man, I'm, I'm going up for the night or the day. Like, you were just going for the day. Do you want to go with me? I was like, hell yeah. So get in the car. I remember driving up there. You were telling me all about these stories. You were telling me the story. With- Did we ride together? Uh-huh. Okay. I'm thinking was, of a difference. It was me, encounter. you, and Jenny. And you took me up there and you were telling me the story about the people who came to the house with the material Mm -hmm. and put the material in your dad's hand. You're like, you're gassing me up the whole way. I'm so stoked. I'm like, we're going to see some orbs. Like I'm finally going to, like I was all in my head about it. And I was all in my head about, we're going to see something. And then it was in the back of my head. Am I worthy? Like, is it? Like the same thing I struggle with as a kid. Right. Is it like, um, everyone if, around you seeing it, am I worthy to right. see it? If, if we don't see it, is it me? Yeah. That's what was going right, through my head. Right. Right. And so we get, we got there and then somebody else shows up. Vincent. Yeah. So Vincent and Eileen oh, show up. Shout out Vincent. So I Vincent met both Jenna of them. From an earlier episode. Yeah. Love Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Vincent reminds me of my dad and my mom's father, my grandfather, mixed into one person. And he really dogged on me in our episode. So I have yeah. I have a very uh in my head, I have a very good relationship with Vincent. I don't know how Vincent <laughs> feels. No, he's he's great. He's a great guy. He's a wonderful guy. Um so I met them on the same day. And I kind of soft pitched to your family and to Vincent, the podcast <laughs> that I night. I was telling him, I was like, the way Ryan talks, like he, we need to have a, like he needs to, to have a podcast. Like I, blah, blah, blah. The first thing Vincent said to me, he shook my hand. He said, um, are you human? <laughs> I remember that. It, that messed with me until Ryan's wedding. Oh my God. Yeah. That's a whole nother story. Anyway, <laughs> we, we didn't see anything. Your dad never got up and was like, they're here. We didn't go out there and see anything. I was, I mean, I went out there and spent time looking in the sky, never saw anything. I'm like, damn, you know, I guess they don't like me or whatever. And uh, we're riding home and we're, we're like in Wilmington and and the whole time we were talking about music. Am I starting to ring any bells here? Uh, no. Because I'm going to need your help in the story. <laughs> okay. And I mean, I remember the, the day. I don't remember started, every little thing that was said. And stop me if this is like, if I shouldn't be talking about this. But you were talking to me about the messages in the music and the songs that your dad was instructed to listen to to get the message. Yeah. I'm surprised he didn't include any of that in the book, actually. So I'm, I'm still cool to, to keep yeah, yeah. I'm going to need your That's help with there. the first two songs. Cause I don't, oh, I don't remember. I remember, dude. This this blew your mind. Mu- this was better. I remember now. This was better than now. seeing anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This so, this rocked your world. All right, we're in the car, but we have to take a okay. break from this okay. story to yeah. provide more backstory. So, me and my because I had moved out. Me and my dad's relationship started really improving. Hoping to have my dad. It always does. Soon. When you move out, yeah. man. Now your parents are like we're best friends. <laughs> and we were listening to Neil Young one night in the car. And my dad dropped a bomb on me, man. And he's like, it is so, I, it, I can't listen to the song because it makes me cry. But he, we're listening to this song and I won't say it because I'll say it and when I finish the next story. And he's like, when I die, I want you to play this song at my funeral. Mm-hmm. I'm like, fuck, like, how are you going to drop that on me right now? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh man, you just ruined this whole song for me. Um, <laughs> so he tells me, this is months prior to, to being in the car with Ryan. He tells me this song. I'm like, okay, okay. So fast forward months now, we're back in the car. Ryan's talking to me about the magic or, or the message in the music from your dad. What were the first two songs? It, it was, was a Led Zeppelin song. It was After the Gold Rush. Oh, you ruined the story. <laughs> you said what were the first two songs? No, no. After the Gold Rush was the third song. No, I don't think so. So you told me the first two songs. And it I was The remember. Battle for Evermore uh-huh. by Led Zeppelin mm-hmm. and After the Gold Rush, Neil Young. Okay, well then then I'm mixing up the story, but you told me one of the songs and you were about to tell me the second song. And I, and I interrupted you and said, you know what song I really like, man, is after the gold rush. And you were like, that was the song I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. Huge synchronicity on that song because I told you what my dad had told me 
before you told yeah, me before that, we ever that the second or third that, song ever. was. Uh, and, you know, for Rush. people out there, like, you, you have to understand, we're how many episodes in now? What is this? 95, almost 96, 94. We're almost this 94 is, episodes in. Uh, and, and I still have not been able to unpack everything. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's 16 years worth of experiences and conversations and data and investigations. You know, it would, it would take, it would take like a week long retreat, just talking all day at somebody to get all this information out. So we're hanging out years and I'm like, Oh bro, I forgot to tell you about this. You know, my dad had an experience in 2017 with blah, 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 blah. And it, and it comes mm-hmm. as time goes on, we talk about more things. There's right. levels to this. And for those who are not at all familiar with what we're talking about, Around 2015, my dad, or, or actually a little sooner, yeah, I was in high school. He started getting these um, these downloads from music. He started obsessively listening to certain Led Zeppelin songs and some other things like After the Gold Rush by Neil Young. There's a Van Halen song called Love Walks In. And there were these different songs that he was getting this strong download from the phenomenon that there was a, a, a very sincere message in them. Like, mm-hmm. like a spiritual message. I mean, Love Walks In by Van Halen, it says something, you can pull up the lyrics if you want, but it says something like an alien, Love Walks In, it's like a, it's like a shining lady. Um, Hotel California, mm-hmm. there's there's some sort of no, lady they, message in that. Uh, pull up After the Gold Rush lyrics. Uh, after are, the Gold Rush is intense. crazy. It talks about silver saucers taking the chosen people to the sun. And yeah. Anyway, so, so dad starts talking about this to a guy by the name of Grant Cameron, who was at the time, he was a prolific uh, uh, UFO researcher, you know, like he had even won an award in 2012. I follow him on Twitter. Yeah, I mean he he, <laughs> he he researches a lot of stuff. I'm I'm saying that for the audience sake. But um he came to our property and started having these conversations with dad about the phenomenon putting messages through music and through artists and musicians. He went and started obsessively researching that, listening to interviews of rock stars, pop stars, and hearing them talk about having UFO sightings and and putting that in their music and all this and that. He wrote a whole book on it. He wrote a whole book inspired by the concept of my dad getting downloads from the phenomenon through music. I can't remember the name of the book, but he even credits my dad as being the catalyst for him, you know, wanting to research this. And that's what we were talking about. And I was breaking that to Alex and it's just so crazy because after the gold rush is one of those songs. I got the lyrics. If you want to hear a little bit of it. Sure. I was, I was going to say we should probably, uh, you know, we've, I think we've talked about this song before, but the lyrics are shocking. So yeah. let, me, let me just breeze through a couple lines. The first line is, well, I dreamed I saw the knights in armor coming, saying something about a queen that's already the like lady. the lady, and literally. Angels. Yeah. There were peasants singing and drummers drumming and the archer split the tree. What does that sound like? That's pretty wild. There was a fanfare blowing to the sun that was floating on the breeze. Look at Mother Nature on the run in the 1970s. And then later in the song, there's a line that says, this is so wild. There's a line that says, well, I dreamed I saw the silver spaceships lying in the yellow haze of the sun. There were children crying and colors flying all around the chosen ones. Like, what is this song even about? I've got, I've got goosebumps. I'm about to cry. Yeah, dude. It says, flying Mother Nature's silver seed to a new home in the sun. Like Now, we're going to talk about something deep that I've never said on the podcast before. Okay. And it's also not in the book. But Damn, on my episode. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you you sparked the conversation. Yeah. Uh, this, You know, this is how it, it's all buried down in there. You know, yeah, I, I mean? might fuck around and get a permanent seat right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, never. Yes. Never have Jenny Let's on the producer it. seat. But um, so one of the phenomenon, when they took my dad in 07, and then, you know, the times he met the lady, they showed him lots of things, some things that he, has, you know, cause I mean, naturally I'm his son. I lived with the guy for 23 years, you know, going through college and then figuring out what to do after that. And then going out on my own. We had a lot of conversations about this. I'm a curious dude. I mean, I ask a lot of questions. I'm trying to figure this stuff. I was like you as a kid, like it keep me up at night wanting to know everything there is to know about the universe and why we're here. And I, I asked my dad, thousands of questions and probed him and wanted to know everything that happened. And, and nobody else was really doing that. And so he pretty much told me everything. And um, 
There's a lot of stuff that he never wants to talk about publicly because he doesn't like to spread doom and gloom. He doesn't want people to hear the bad parts of things because it's like, why worry about it? It's good. You know, like, for example, the being showed him like cataclysmic destruction that could happen if we don't, if, if, if the message doesn't spread, if we don't find love, if we don't find light. But they told him this is not going to happen because it was written. This is a being's words. They said it was written. It was prophesied that the light would win. It's already happened. It's already going to win. We're, we're going to reach the new age. It's just a matter of time, God's timing, you know? Don't even talk about the negative stuff publicly. He doesn't. Anyway, one of the things that they showed dead is that there is a portal in the sun. The sun is a portal, and it's where the the beings come from. They come and go from there. It's like their home. Dude, that's so weird because I was seeing this thing on Twitter the other day that was comparing satellite images of the sun to other stars and how they're very different. I, I you know, I don't want to be too heavy conspiratorial, but like all the satellite- <laughs> well, it's Alex's episode, so now's true. the time. It's not about you. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, like just, I just want people to consider this. All of the satellite images that we're seeing of the celestial cosmos at large are from NASA. That's all I'm going to yeah, say. You're, you're, and I think there's something else going on, uh, you know, as opposed to what they want us to believe are just balls of hot gas. All I'm going to say, people can believe what they want. Yeah, I'm really, I'm still on the fence about space. I'm not, I, I believe in space. I'm just saying, dude. I'm, not, I, I'm speaking for myself. You know, I'm not it's trying not, to it's not you. a ball of gas. It's something so much more yeah. intelligent. I mean, think about it. It's as above, so below. Like if we, on this tiny little silly microcosm of fleshy, disgusting carbon matter that, you know. Oh no, you're pretty cute. Bear, well, I try, <laughs> I try. <laughs> but I'm saying like, if, if, if there's, if there's inherent meaning and value into the life down here in the material plane, there has to be something so much more amazing and significant when you look at the cosmos and see these celestial shining bodies of light that are giving us life in the physical universe. You know what I mean? Yeah. The sun has to be more than a ball of gas. So that's all I'm saying. Yeah. And I've been really, I've been really thinking about the fact, the sheer probability of being given life. I mean, you, you have a better chance of winning the lottery twice in this lifetime than you do of being born. Yeah. It's, it's one in trillions. It is. Trillions. Yeah. yeah. Neil deGrasse Tyson had a video where he was talking about that. Like yeah. the number of people that are born versus the number of people that could have possibly been born is, it, it is miraculous. It, Every single person is a miracle, a miracle, a, a, a mathematical yeah, it's miracle. It's true. It's like, it's, I, I don't want to quote wrong numbers here, but actually it was funny as my first semester of college, I was a biology major and I got like C's across the board, but I loved the material. I love the information. I just wasn't a good, I wasn't a good, like standardized test taking student. You know what I mean? Mm. And all the homework and I got lost. I was, I just C's. wasn't a good student. <laughs> I was a good student when I was interested, but point being, that was one of the things I learned in biology that stuck out to me. It's a, it is a one winning, being born is winning the genetic lottery. Yes. It is a one in multi, I don't remember if it was 200 trillion or if it was 2 trillion or 20 trillion. It was some huge trillion number of you being born exactly the way that you are. Yes. All of these insane factors. It's a miracle. A blessing. I found the figure. What it, is it? It's actually, um, one in 400 trillion. There you go. That's insane. It's insurmountable. That's insane. Yeah. It's and way so, more than winning the lottery twice. And it's like, <laughs> instead of getting wrapped up in the numbers, like get wrapped up in the fact that, that you're a miracle. Yeah. And that you are just by being here, just by showing up are, are so blessed. There's value in, yes. in, in being here. And it's not a mistake yeah. and it's not a chance. You know, it didn't just happen. It's not a coincidence. Yeah. And you can't tell me that whatever happens after this is nothing, not as equally as, as exciting or a blessing or, or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, that's just the kind of things that, that I have to think about to keep me from collapsing into total fear and chaos, <laughs> like a, like a star going into supernova. Whew. 
<laughs> I don't know, you start talking about stars, man, and space, man. Yeah, the <laughs> the thing with space, you know, is is really wild because there's all these thoughts like, is space even like a real thing? Is it some kind of weird ocean? Like there's all kinds of weird theories about space and stuff. But think about this, like, you know, think about dark matter. Dark matter is something that we know almost nothing about. Which they postulate is literally like 95% of the observable or, you know, yeah, universe. Exactly. The majority so, of everything. Right. So even when you say things like, I don't, you know, I don't believe space is just like a big ball of gas. It's like, it or could. the sun. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. The, sun, the sun. It's like, well, it, it could, it could be both. It, you right. Know what I, it, yeah. right. It right. could be a big ball of gas. But in the physical observed exactly. phenomenon. Exactly. But yeah. because of how much we don't know, there's just so many layers of other things it could also be. Right. Well, space is like an onion. <laughs> All right, Shrek. <laughs> well, well, just like the human body and the soul. Yeah. But and, and like that that was my point. Not not that that your space isn't real or whatever. <laughs> it's as above, so below. It's yeah. that there has to be a space spiritual side to things, just like the human microcosm and the fact that we all have a soul simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And like, there's even, I think it was NBC news or something a few years ago, put out an article online and it was like, our stars conscious and astrophysicists, quantum physicists, whatever the cutting edge, you know, science is at the moment where they're studying stars and things like that. They're honestly postulating like our celestial bodies and planetary bodies at some level Conscious. Yes. Science Spoiler nerd. alert. Yes. I mean, that's that's what the lady told my dad that the Earth is a living being, and it has it has a a, a a vibration that is linked to the soul of all living humans, and it is encoded to protect itself. And that's where these throughout the eons, that's where these cataclysms occur, because humanity at all these different times and these cycles in the ancient past were so negative and so far removed from God, that it was harming the resonant vibration of the earth. You know, you know, you have these cataclysmic earthquakes or ice ages or whatever. The earth is next cycle. I, I can't take this pain anymore. Mm. And that's what the lady showed my dad was that that's why we have to return to God. We have to return to love. We have to return to light so that we can live in harmony with the earth and not be shaken off. If you catch my drift, mm -hmm. he doesn't like to I, talk about that. I found a few cool little tidbits about the stars being conscious thing. So uh, we know that all molecules to a certain extent are conscious and stars do in fact cool enough to contain stable molecules. Therefore they are conscious. Hmm. Um, and then also I found something that said uh, that stars stable disequilibria catalytic metabolisms, <laughs> periodic physiological cycles, and homeostatic feedback controls qualify stars as living organisms. So even by our own scientific standards, they are in fact living organisms and they are conscious. Wow. Yeah, I got lost there in the go. middle there, but <laughs> I'm really glad that that was the outcome. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It was just a bunch of big science words basically yeah. to say, yes, they are in fact conscious. Yeah. I, I, I think through, through this show, I personally have come to accept that as a complete truth that yeah. all celestial bodies are, you know, in fact uh, alive so, basically. Cause, Cause everything is consciousness. E exactly. so, so they have to be alive. Take that consciousness they and have apply, to it, be. apply it to the, uh, astrology. Mm -hmm. That's that's why I believe in astrology in the first right. place. Like these Same. are these these are these are in in some macrocosmic, grand galactic scale. These are living beings out in the cosmos. Mm -hmm. They're not just balls of gas. You know what I mean? Energies. Like we're taught. Yeah, they're energies, and yeah. like that's why I believe in astrology in the first place. When this when when the soul is is brought into this world, every every you know living human soul or whatever, when it's when it's brought into this world. And all of these celestial energies are in these specific places. It it, it has a, a, a like a cosmic archetypal, you know, imprint on the soul. Astrology yeah. has to be real. To to believe otherwise is closing your eyes to the bigger picture. I'm not saying you got to believe in like the classic horoscopes and all that, but there's something to it. Yeah, that's that's the other thing about astrology is a lot of people just look at like the daily horoscopes yeah. and they're like in the newspaper. Yeah, yeah, like that's that's BS. Leo's whatever. gonna have a bad I, day today. Well, I checked ours yesterday, Nick, and we were 
uh, CoStar said we were very compatible yesterday. Well, uh, we remember what Vincent said about our past lives, my friend. Yes. You, you and I, we're compatible, all right. Let me just say that. We are, we are certainly compatible. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to say this right here before the episode even ends Lord. because every time it's over, we always talk about this, but I'm going to say it right now, hot. <laughs> this is a banging episode, dude. Thank you. Really. Yeah, this is really cool. I'm I, I really this. enjoying. Well, I'm enjoying. We this. knew it was going to be hot. <laughs> yeah. Well, we knew you were going to be hot. We knew you were going to be hot, dude. Our viewers are going to sky. All the ladies, <laughs> you know, our demographic, I think, is like mostly male. That's about to change, brother. <laughs> That's about to change big mm. time. Yo, to leap back a quick second on the um, back to the astrology stuff and like, yeah, I'll let you leap back. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Alex. E- even though you're in that seat, you're still in complete control. <laughs> yeah, I'm noticing, like, it's it's not about the job. It's, you know... It's yeah. the people doing yeah. the job. Yeah, exactly. But uh, about, like, celestial bodies being um, conscious, but also, like, giving off vibrations and frequencies and energy. You know, that's a hermetic principle. Everything is vibration right. and frequency. Yeah. And Everything. scientific. Absolutely. It, it That is science... That's science fact. Yeah, I think it's called the Brownian movement. Something. It's a real law. It's a scientific law. Accepted. Yeah. That. That. I mean. That alone. You know. So imagine. You know. We. You don't have to imagine because it's true. But we are vibrational and and frequency emitting beings. We are affected by frequencies. This is all science. Mm -hmm. NASA told us that at my house. Really? Yes. That the that the bones of the human skeleton are actually receiving. Uh, regular frequency signals from somewhere out there in the cosmos, like yeah, downloads. Yeah, an antenna. Like yes, we yes, talked about the, 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 the human skeleton and the hair are an antenna to some sort of signal coming from out there mm-hmm. in the cosmos. Yeah, and it's it's only plausible that those completely unfathomably huge celestial bodies are putting out extremely strong, potent vibrations and frequencies and they probably go really freaking far because of how big they are i mean we can see their light with our eyes from billions of light years away i mean and they're all locked within an astronomical astrological whatever you want to call into a cycle by you know gravity they are all tethered to one another so how could it be that we on a planet that is tethered with all these other planets how are we unaffected by those other planets? Right. You mm. know what I just thought about when you were saying that? What? Now, look, I don't endorse Freemasonry, but as we, uh, you know, Bledsoe said sowers, I've been saying that lately. Bledsoe, I said it in the live chat the other night. Bledsoe said sowers or omis understand omis. that when we extrapolate all of this data from these secret societies and mystery schools, that they're all hinting at something very similar. So just because, you know, I'm not saying go be a Mason doesn't mean that they're not, you know, hiding certain little nuggets of wisdom in their teachings. And they have a very common popular phrase, out of chaos order, mm-hmm. Right. What's the, the American motto, e pluribus unum, out of many, one? We know Freemasons and Rosicrucians and Deists and some Christians too started the country. We know that, okay? So there's a lot of Masonic symbolism in, in the American seal, the dollar bill, all this stuff. The, the, um, the uh, Washington, D.C. is based on a bunch of like Greek and Masonic architecture. It's a fact, okay? What is out of chaos or uh, what is out of chaos order mean? Um, there is a cosmic duality. There is a feminine and a masculine constant, or you could think of the dark and the light or the chaos and the order rotating or, you know, the Ouroboros, the serpent eating his tail for eternity. There is this inherent watery abyssal chaos to space, which is symbolized as like noon, the Egyptian deity of, of the watery abyss of, of, um, chaos of of space and then there's the order of the celestial bodies it's like it's crazy when you think about it what you just said there's this extreme precise calculated order in the cosmos and how it functions you know and it's like that's what you see when you zoom all the way out and all the way in on the macrocosmic and the microscopic or microcosmic scale is like this intelligent consciousness perceiving order at all levels of the known universe that's god the mind. You know what I mean? Everywhere you look, there's order. 
The law of large numbers. It's a real mathematical function where if you look at any data set, it could be anything. It could be how many red cars in a city or how many people um, burp after they have a soda. Any stupid data set. You know what I mean? If you zoom out and look at the data at a high enough level, there is always a repeating pattern at mm. every level of the observable universe. Out of chaos comes order. Yeah, I've been... This uh, is a very deep... Uh, hermetic, you know, spiritual yeah. principle. I've been getting really into the numbers lately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. like numerology. The I numerology, had to process what yeah. you were saying for a second. I yep. was still thinking about the order thing, but so I, so I think that like the astrology is what kind of governs your spiritual body expression, or yeah, like all personality. Of the, yeah, exactly. And I think that archetype, this physical world that we live in, that you could call a matrix, operates purely on numbers. And so how you move about in this physical world, it comes out in your numerology mm -hmm. and how you kind of are spiritually comes out in your astrology. So yeah, I, I vibe with that. Yeah. That's kind of what I've been thinking about a lot. I, I'm not super into the numerology. I'm getting there when we, when I get there, we'll have another. You're being very humble about that. I, you've <laughs> told me some pretty mind blowing things about numerology. I, I know. I just like, yeah, I, I'm like, I'm at a very surface level. You're kind at the of, learning phase. Yeah, 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 exactly. So like Nick is an eight life path. Yeah, what does that mean for me? So uh, money, basically eight. Um, I saw something about uh, power with eights. So money and power, essentially. Um, well, I'm waiting for it. Stay tuned. <laughs> well, having it, not having it. And it's like, and it's, you'll experience both. Um, I've written it down somewhere. And then you're a three. I'm a one life path. Oh, you're a one? What are you, no, Alex? I'm a nine. So you're a one, and then you're a partial seven. So meaning you're on the um, seventh day. Mm -hmm. So seven, what, what, what day are you before we move on? Fifteenth. Yes. Fifteenth, yes. so six. six. So you're eight and a six. Six is home and family. Uh -huh. so you're My like dad a, is a six life path. Yeah, home and family. Olivia is a six, a true six. Six day, six life path. Whoa. Yeah. Um, and then I think Jenny is a true seven. I think so. Uh, she's born on the 16th, which is one plus 16th. six. So you yeah. both are sevens, and seven is genius, by the way. But you're one. One is masculine, aggressiveness, power. One, beginning. from what I understand, it's like the magician, the manifester, the leader. It's, yeah, the, well, it's the, the one. It's the, the, the leader, the beginning. But one is masculine, two is feminine, and three is the child. I could have told you that. That's the law of the triangle. That's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's true. Yeah, transcends multiple planes. When I was reading like Rosicrucian manuals, it mm -hmm. goes all in. It's it's literally called um, the law of the triangle, and they draw these very strange but very fascinating, mind blowing. And, and the initial existence of the material universe was the point. It was one. It was the original expression of consciousness, and then it makes a line. It splits into duality, and there are two points. Mm -hmm. The opposite opposing, you know, forces, male and female. And then those two forces, make when they combine, force. they make another force, which is that creation. It's mm -hmm. the child. It's the secret of the Trinity. You know, mm -hmm. we, we are the creation of the divine. You know what I mean? The yep. law of the triangle is what that's called. Yeah. So nine is uh, adaptation and completion. Nine completes the cycle. There's a lot of misconceptions about nine is what I'm finding out. And I'm finding it hard to find real information on nines. I paid for a reading. I didn't bring it with me. Nine is the mirror from what I heard because mm -hmm. maybe I'm confusing that. Maybe I'm confused. So I'll run through them real quick. Um, so there's, it's one through nine. So you're, all of the numbers in your birthday added together and then those are added together until you come out with one. It's Pythagorean numerology. Right. So it's one through nine and then you have 11, 22, and 33. Master numbers. Yes. So one, uh, masculine, aggressive, the beginning leader, that kind of thing. Two is compromising, feminine, um, and that's all I have written down for two. I, I, I don't really know any twos, I think. But three- I've never met a two. Communication. Four is law and order and hard work. What I, what I like about four is you can really apply it to your life. Never break the law on a four day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
there's going to be more police, more law and order out on the four days. You know, for, and if you think about, you know, we, we understand that symbolism are the archetypal expressions of consciousness, right? Mm-hmm. We used to talk about this a lot earlier in the show, and I want to do an episode on it soon. Four is the symbolism for like the structure of the material universe. You have the divine, the original, the, the duality, the expression of, you know, binary sorts of cosmic existence, masculine and feminine forces. Then you have the third, the creation of that. But then what happens when you add another point? It creates a square. You have a structure. You know, most things sit on a table. It's a sturdy, solid foundation. Houses are built in boxes. You have all that Saturn cube symbolism. Oh, we're trapped in Saturn's cube. We're in the matrix. The physical material reality is represented by that square. If you look at the real um, philosopher's stone symbol, not like our rendition of it on the, on the Bledsoe said so symbology, but the real one is the triangle, the circle, and then it's squared. It's showing all this consciousness is encased in materiality. The law and the order. Yeah, yeah. The, the structure. Yep. So six home and family, seven genius. We talked about these. Eight money. Um, what I I'll, I have, I'll be quick about this, but um, Beijing Olympics, two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. Do you know what day they opened? They they did the opening ceremony. August eighth, two thousand eight. Eight wow. eight twenty eight. Essentially, a day after my birthday. That's a Lionsgate portal. Eight eight two thousand eight. And after they did that, they have become one of the world powers monetarily. Wow. Their wow. GDP, I think, increased a lot. Their, their, like, their wealth as a country increased by, by a lot. I don't know the exact figures, so I'm not going right. to speak. But right. money. I have, a, I have a personal story about money. I went shopping for a large item, like a large dollar value item, and I'm, I'll keep it brief. And uh, I realized on the way to the store that it was an eight day. So we did, we picked out exactly what we wanted. I mean, big ticket item. I get to the checkout and I'm reviewing my receipt with the salesperson. I'm like, what is this? And she's like, well, actually what happened was we put that item on the floor and we mistagged it and we tagged it for the price that we bought it for. Oh my God. So essentially I got, I, I, I saved a lot. I got uh, 50% off essentially. This, this item. I saved so much money on accident and I went shopping on an eight day. Damn. So keep that in mind, right? Uh, nines, adaptation, completion, talked about that. And then we get into the master numbers. 11, the master communicator and charisma. You look at a lot of these internet celebrities, a lot of these people, I'm pretty sure Joe Rogan is uh, 11 life path or he was born on the 11th. But a lot of these people who get into the the communication side of things. And then 22 is the master builder. Don't know a lot about 22, but I decided to get married on a 22 day. So hey, we'll find out about that's that. That's awesome. Um, and 33 is like the master influencer. The master, the teacher. The teacher. The sage or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's why, you know, for those who, who understand the, the symbolism behind like Jesus dying at 33, mm-hmm. that's... That's that number was put like that for a reason. He yeah. was the master or the teacher. So, so, and remember, we did a Buddhism episode. There's, um, what was it, thirty two jewels in heaven uh, from a Buddhist perspective or something like that. Thirty three levels. Oh, thirty three vertebrae on the spine and thirty three levels of. Um, we did a whole episode on thirty three. Yeah, thirty three <laughs> degrees of Freemasonry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, so that's like a taste of it. Maybe we'll we'll get into it a little deeper. But Nick, you got a hard question for me. Um. Yes, I do. Um, why Catholicism? <laughs> You'll have to ask my mom. Man. All right, no, actually, the real reason is uh, I'm 25% Italian. My grandfather was born in Italy and then Ooh, very, his middle name is Campana. Yeah, that's, that's my epic. mom's maiden name. I didn't okay. know that. All right, well, let's go into, all right, real quick because I know we're, we're running nah, out of nah, time. Go for but, it. But um, synchronicities in my life. My mom's maiden name is Campana. That's now my middle name. But my dad's mother's name was Ann Camp. Mm. Wow. That's Whoa. like revert. Yes. Bro. That's yes. crazy. That's then insane. The, the craziest, that's psycho. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, and so the craziest, the crazier than that, I don't know if you guys know this story, you might, but um, so it was, uh, it was 1998. My mom was pregnant with me and my cousin, my cousin, Justin, shout out, Justin, shout out, Justin, Love you, brother. Um, I was supposed to be born in October 
And my cousin Justin goes to my dad and is like, wouldn't it be so cool if Alex was born on my birthday? Bro, Nick, you realize where I'm going with that reaction, right? No, <laughs> no. where are you going with it? Last night we had this oh. exact conversation with your dad. Yeah, that's crazy. And the so, same thing happened. Yeah. Yeah, so he goes, wouldn't it be so cool if he was born on my birthday? And my dad's like, no, that would make, <laughs> that would make him two months premature. What happened? He's two months premature. I you were? Born two yes. months premature on my cousin's birthday, 20 years apart. August 28th, 1998. We got to get your dad to briefly, because I'll talk to him about it. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. To tell, last night, Nick's dad was, you know, because he's here in town. He was just telling us, you, you, you know these people better than me. They're, they're your relatives. Well, no, no. Actually, these were, um, this was like my childhood best friend. Okay. This was, uh, yeah, they lived down the street from us. And yeah, he was he was essentially saying, uh, you know, they they were expecting twins, and he, he was like, man, he, he was, saw a vision that they were going to be twins. Yes, in advance. Exactly. Yeah, like a spiritual vision. Yep, he saw a vision that he, they were going to have twins, uh, which they had always wanted, and never, you know, these were the last children they had. Mm -hmm. So they had two other sons prior. And they really just, I don't know why, they just really wanted twins. Um, and yeah, he, he said, man, because my, uh, my dad and my brother, they have the same birthday. Which is a day before mine, too. Yeah, there's just so a lot of weird. That's my uh, fiance. Is it fiance? If, if You're fiance. You're engaged. It goes both ways, right? Yeah. It, yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. That's Olivia's birthday. Yeah, so Olivia's birthday is August 6th. Yeah. What? Mine is August 7th, and Nick's dad and brother are also August 6th. And that's weird. We all have that uh, connection. That's extremely it's weird. It's very weird. I didn't know Olivia's birthday was August 6th. Yeah. yeah. Well, what? See, Nick, in a past life, we had a more physical connection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. yeah. We, were more, we were more deeply connected. We're connected yeah. by numbers now. But anyway, yeah, the Janes. So he was like, man, wouldn't it be so oh, it cool? it was the Janes, and they are twins. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. he was he was like uh, Scott, who was the father. He he was like, man, you know, Robert. He got him and his son have the same birthday. It's so cool. I would love if if you know my my boys had my twins had the same birthday as me. And I believe yeah, they were born like a couple of weeks prematurely. Yep, and on his birthday. I got one more story that's weird about this. Dude, I was like four pounds or something. But dude, that is I, I did not know that yeah. about you, Alex. That's really miraculous. I mean, that's you asked why he's oh. so hot. <laughs> no, uh, sorry to cut you off, man. But the cool one of the coolest things about that job we were talking about earlier, I was selling to this couple, and it got to like, oh, what do you do? She's like, oh, I just retired from the hospital. I was in the um, the neonatal unit. I was like, no way. How, like what hospital? She was like, New Hanover. I was like, how long did you work there? She was like, oh, I, I started working there in like the 1990s. I'm like, there's a really good chance that you helped save my life. Wow. Like she worked in that hospital in the unit I was in, in 1998. Wow. And then getting wow. like, and I was like, thank you. You know what I mean? Like yeah. such, such a service. wild experience. <laughs> okay. Two quick birth stories. This is pretty dark. The day I was <laughs> okay. the, the day I was born in 1993, um, there was like a mass shooting at Luigi's across town. Oh, the restaurant Luigi's. That was the day you were born. Yeah, that's a notorious story I in know. Fayetteville. I know. Whoa. Wow. And uh, it was all on the TV while I was being born. <laughs> Whoa. Anyway, so then the other story you might not remember this. I think I was 18 when Jonah was born. Shout out Leah and Jonah. That sounds about right. Um, yes. Those are my lovely niece and nephew. Uh, Leah watches like every episode. She got like her friends into it. They're the best. I love you, Leah and Jonah. Shout yeah. out Leah's friends. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're just wonderful kids. And yeah. I've, I've known them since they were born. Yeah. And, um, you know, because me and Nick have been friends since we were 11 and 12. Anyway, so I know when, when your sister was pregnant with Jonah, I had a very vivid dream that it was going to be a boy. And in my, and I knew this because in my dream, I was wearing, I had this shirt that was like, uh, I got it from Walmart. It was, it was a long sleeve kind of like, you know, the waffle material. Mm -hmm. It was a long sleeve waffle material camo pattern shirt. And in my dream, I was wearing this shirt and I was holding the boy and 
I remember your sister and everybody, maybe your mom was in on it too, but she was like, it's going to be a girl. I can feel it. It's my motherly intuition. It's going to be a girl. It's going to be a girl. I want a girl. And I told her, I was like, I had a dream. It's going to be a boy. I think it's going to be a boy and move on. We didn't really ever talk about it again. You know, it wasn't a big deal. And sure enough, it was a boy. And when I showed up to their house, the first time that I was there, when the baby was there, I happened to be wearing the shirt from my dream. <laughs> so I was like, whoa, this is weird. I remember that. And it like wasn't planned. I was just coming over to hang out. I mean, we live, you know, half a mile apart or whatever. So I went over and I held him in the chair in my dream that I had the camo shirt on. Yeah, it's so weird and profound. Yeah. I don't know. I think I've told you this before, but so it's kind of funny. I was actually born... Uh, after I was supposed to be born, <laughs> I was baking in the oven uh, a little too long. And my well mom, done. Well, yeah, well done. Yeah. yeah. And my mom was like, so over it. Like she was <laughs> so over it. Uh, and she was in a lot of pain and she was just ready to get me the fuck out. And she prayed to God on like a Friday it was, I think it was a Friday or a Saturday. She prayed to God. She said, God, I need to know when this baby is coming. I can't take much more of this. And she said, instantaneously, she heard a man's voice. Actually, it may have been a woman's voice, which is even more interesting. Yeah. Say Wednesday. And, and I you were born on Wednesday. Wow. Born on Wednesday. Like four days later or yep. whatever. We're five, I don't know. Yep. Wow. Yep. Wednesday. She heard it clear. That's she insane. Said she she it, heard it clear as day. Wednesday. Boom. And I feel I like born. so many expecting mothers have experiences. Oh yeah. And if you think Definitely. about it's a spiritual thing. Exactly. And the spiritual miracle. There's a soul like gestating inside of you. Yes. Yeah. You know? Like it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Our uh, one of our very bet like mutual best friends for 9 months you have two souls. Pretty much. Wow. Yeah. Damn. Twice the power. But Nick and I have this very very good like close close mutual friend named Jacob. Shout out Jacob. Love you Jacob. No, I, I, he, Jacob. He's, yeah, I know. I know. I'm just saying for the audience sake. He you There's know, an audience? Yeah, I like, I like you know, there's, there's somebody out there listening, but, um, so he's, he's our very good friend and we, the three of us just grew up together and just like doing so much together. And, um, anyway, Jacob was born nine pounds with a tooth. With a tooth. With a tooth, dude. A tooth. What? It's, it's real. It's possible. Yeah. I know of a baby recently that was born with a tooth. I, I can't remember who it is, but <laughs> I saw the, I saw the picture. <laughs> Nine pounds of the tooth. Have That's legend the, shit. Have you and seen the, the picture of the baby that comes out with the birth control in his hand? Oh, yes. What? Dude. Yeah. You know, like the... Oh, the I IUD? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. I, I was like, are you like a pill? No, uh, the IUD. Jesus. He came out like, I got you. I yeah. beat you. It's getting crazy now. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I like to say is like, I came out on my terms. Yeah. I'm like, let's get this party started. You've always been in control. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> You've yeah, always yeah, yeah. Been I came in out to a freaking mass shooting, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing great. Like setting the tone. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> well, and then that leads itself to the whole conversation of like, um, all of that. Like anything that the mother's going through gets put into that soul. That's, that's yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so last thing I'll say about birth stories, um, my brother, Jeremy is like, he's, he's like six, three now, but he was always tall. I mean, even as a toddler, he was huge. He, he was, he was, when he was like one or two years old, he was nearly two feet long, like way bigger than he should have been for his age. Tall? Yeah. Yes. He's, okay. He's tall. No, two feet, <laughs> two feet tall. <laughs> two I mean, feet long. Same difference. You stand him up. He's two feet tall at like one. But if you lay him down, he's long. <laughs> okay. He was semantics. laying down most semantics. of the time. I think most people out there can understand what I'm saying. <laughs> but anyway, this so is a me thing. Dude, he was so big in the womb. He broke my mother's ribs. Oh my Whoa. God. He was just always kicking his feet and hyper even before he was born. You know what my mom just told me? My mom and dad are here. My mom just told me like an hour ago. She was like, you ruined me. <laughs> <laughs> she said, well, she said you, you ruined yeah, me. Right. I mean, you're, I was, her, you're her freaking baby. I literally, you're, yeah. her, you're her prize. Yeah. My mom almost died. She can cap all she wants, brother. bro. <laughs> For she, real? Yeah. So I like to tell Nick that uh, mom tried to kill me and then he tried to kill mom. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's cool amazing. now. Everybody's fine. That's we're, hilarious. Dude. We're all Gucci. Yeah, yeah. we, we got to do this again. This is fun. This, this is, is awesome. Super fun. Maybe this in another was, two this years. This was really like... Another uh, two this years? Was, <laughs> this was a really like awesome 
Yeah. Experience. I had a great time. Thanks for having yeah. me on, man. Dude, are you kidding me? Yeah. You're yeah. always welcome. Shout out to Nick. Shout out Ian. Dylan already got one. Shout out DG. He's been waiting two years for this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I hope they made shout it. Shout out all my homies. Shout out, shout out all the teachers that taught me yeah. everything I know. <laughs> yeah. Shout out Graham. Shout out Graham. What's up, Graham? What's up, Graham? Is yeah, that Grandma? I'm, no, that's uh, Graham, my teacher. Oh, oh okay. hell yeah. Awesome. Well, do you want to do the uh, hit hit the um, the GB with the BGs? <laughs> yeah, the Green Boys. We got to hit them with the Bye Guys. <laughs> Let's do it. Right. We call ourselves the Green Boys for those that don't know. Yes. Let's go. All right. We'll lead the way. Oh, <laughs> are we going down or up? <laughs> I mean, it's your episode. All right. Three, two, one. Bye, Bye guys. guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more, check out our other videos. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe. See you next week. Peace. Peace.